Hello, today I will demonstrate a method to synchronize two oscilloscopes together so that I can view eight timeline channels simultaneously. For this demonstration I will be using a DPO7104 as my primary oscilloscope and an MSO5204 as the second oscilloscope. First I need to connect a BNC cable from the aux out jack in the rear of my DPO7104 to the aux in port on the front of my MSO5204. The aux out will create an active low TTL level pulse every time the oscilloscope triggers. This will be used to synchronize the triggering of the second oscilloscope to the first. With my B and C cable connected, I now need to characterize and correct for delay in the trigger configuration. I start by connecting the channel 1 probe for both oscilloscopes to the same source. Ideally, this would be a fast rise signal. I initially use auto set to allow both oscilloscopes to display the signal on the screen. This will cause both oscilloscopes to use a rising edge trigger on channel 1. Later on, however, each channel will be looking at a different signal, so we need to change the trigger settings. In the trigger menu, I change the source to aux, I set the slope to fall, and the threshold is appropriate for TTL level logic. Now I need to change the horizontal scale on both oscilloscopes so that I can see the skew of the rising edge relative to the center of the graticule. In this case, I set the scope to 20 nanoseconds per division. Now I need to go into the vertical setup menu to access the dskew control on the second oscilloscope. In the DSKU menu, I need to enter a negative time value to align the rising edge of my signal with the center of the graticule, such that it will match the display of the first oscilloscope. In this example, I use a value close to negative 30 nanoseconds. I could move the probe from channel to channel and repeat this process individually for the other channels on my oscilloscope, but here I will trust that the DSKU will be the same and copy the time value over from channel 1 to the other three channels. To make sure that my signals have the best vertical resolution available, I position and scale each channel so that they fill as much of the display as possible without going off screen. This allows the signals to make the best use of the full range of the A to D converters. At this point I could let both oscilloscopes run and know that the data between the two is time aligned. However, in order to display all four channels from both oscilloscopes on the same display, I will be using a custom program called Scope 2 to Ref, which runs on the first oscilloscope. This program will set both oscilloscopes to single sequence acquisition, arm the triggers, and then once both oscilloscopes have successfully triggered, it will transfer the waveforms from the second oscilloscope to the first and display them as reference waveforms. For this program to work, the second oscilloscope needs to be listed as a resource in TechVisa on the first oscilloscope. Both of my oscilloscopes are connected to our network and have obtained an IP address via DHCP. Because I did not use static IP addresses, I need to find the IP address of my second oscilloscope manually. An easy way to do this is to go to the Windows desktop, then mouse over the TechVisa LAN server control in the system tray. The tooltip that pops up will show the IP address. Now that I know the IP address of the second oscilloscope, I need to tell the TechVisa instrument manager on my first oscilloscope to look for that address. To do this, I right click on the TechVisa icon in the system tray and select Instrument Manager. Next, I click on the search criteria and select the LAN settings. I manually enter the IP address of the second oscilloscope into the host name field. I click the down arrow to add it to the list, then I tell TechVisa to update its instrument list. Once it has located the second oscilloscope, I click on Identify just to verify that everything is talking correctly. With everything configured, I use the drop-down boxes in the Scope 2 to Ref application to connect to the first oscilloscope under Host and the second oscilloscope under Slave. And I toggle back to the TechScope application, then back to the Scope 2 to Ref application so that both are visible on the screen. I press the Acquire Signals button to trigger the oscilloscopes and transfer the acquired waveforms. Now with everything saved, I can adjust the display so that everything is visible in a format that makes it easy to view. Thank you for watching this video. For more information about anything you've seen here, please contact us at www.techtronics.com forward slash support.